<laughs> set tidying. Well, considering what I do on this, this is pretty clean. I agree. <laughs> Welcome to Trapping Ink TV. I'm Sandy Mellon. And I'm Rich Mellon. And today on, on the show, we are going after otter again. Great year for otter. Otter populations are up throughout most of North America. Yes. And the North American river otter is the only one in the world that can be harvested. Yeah. In lots of places where they were, uh, you know, totally extinct. I've talked to a, a Kentucky trapper last week. Now they have so many there, they're allowed 10, 12 a year. And that's awesome because our quota also is 12. So that's what you're going to see us doing this week. So in combination to having really high otter populations, uh, once again, we have really unique situations. We have uh, went into the, the winter really high with water and we've right. had extra flow. And so we've, you're going to see a bunch of different techniques. Some work, some don't, but the basics still apply. Absolutely. So those basics are, you know, the, the, where they're going to travel, the importance of, of creeks and, and rivers and water, the importance of where the food is. Absolutely. Let's get at it. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do, and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. Okay, so we have otter track here, it goes right by, it goes right past a box full of, of beaver meat. I, uh, I'm told that otter eat beaver, can't prove it by me. Anyway, this was yesterday that they crossed this during the night. So I went down here, took a look, and there was a couple of spots that were just made for blind sets. So I'm not sure, I might be behind them, meaning that they've come and gone already. That happens a lot with otter. And uh, we'll just see if, if anything came back or not, or I'll show you the, the sets that I set up anyway. They'll be here for the next time for sure. So this is the usual place where otter are, creepy as heck. You can hear water running everywhere. Oh, look at that. They were back here last night. Or something was, because that was not open. I set one out over, under that tree over there because they were going around the tree and into the top of an old uh, beaver run. That's really interesting. I need to trap on it. Let's see my other spot here. Oh, they did not go in it either. There's a open spot over here. That they were going in, you can see the water running down there. Set a 280 over top of it, but nothing. So what was here? 
sure don't look like otter tracks. What poked its head up here? Well, I can see my pink clothespin over there, but I do not see the trap setting up. So let's see what's going on here. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. Otter blind set, perfect. Uh, was he by himself? No, he wasn't. There are more of them. Oh, it's a big one too. Oh my goodness, it's a big one. Let me get set up here. I think I'll probably plunk another, another one over here too as well. This is a good spot. They cross here a lot. There is nothing as worthwhile as that simply painted pink clothespin. <clears throat> Let me tell you. Is it, uh, last time I come through here, I could see about that much at the top of my trap. It could have easily just been drifted over. And now, this guy might have been caught yesterday. Oh, nice big one. Real nice otter. I'm gonna be able to take it out of here anyway. When you spend time on your trap line, you get to learn those spots that are important. And this is not does not look like a creek here. You've seen me catch many, many, many otter here, but it doesn't look like a creek whatsoever. But it's very important. The otter travel it all the time. And the best part is, is they travel travel it predictably. They follow where the water would be running if there was water running. And unless the, <coughs> the wind drifts and fills in their, their rut, they will follow it time and again. This is the second one in a month in the exact same spot. Here's my, my trap stabilizer down here. gonna set it back in here because there was a couple more here and you see that they've you know gone that way and or, or they, I think they were coming this way and the others headed on, on on by they'll be back again there are an immense number of water this year huge number You want it as close as you can to the middle because you don't know which way he's coming from. <laughs> and then I just set it back where I can use some grass to cover it over. Remember to take off my sets there. I'm gonna need a twig here now that I'm kneeled here. Oh, here's what I had before, I guess. Just so it looks like that's the only path for them to take. All right, I'm gonna take him back to the uh, machine. I think I'm gonna grab another, another uh, trap here. And we'll set one more up. Man, that is a nice otter. Wow. Okay, we have a unique situation here. Uh, this usually is frozen up this time of the year, but because the water is so high, and we have a beaver dam, a little tiny beaver dam was put in here, and the water is rolling over top of it, and of course it's keeping everything open even though we just went through some minus 40 but the otters as you can see have been busy 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 here so 
the holes are way too big for traditional setup. So here's what I'm doing. You can see I've got a couple of 280s in the water down there. And I put rubber bodied minnows on the on the triggers. We'll see if it works. I don't know. It could. I hope it does. It'd be cool. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. At Old Smokes Coffee, we slow roast our coffee over a fire, making it smooth and memorable. You can order a smoked coffee online. Old Smokes Coffee, crafted coffee for the courageous. Halford Hides, unique beyond compare. Everything for the outdoors. You can shop in person or online from our vast catalog. Range Road Enterprises understands hard work. Our products work as hard as you do. See our full line of firewood processors, sawmills, and more at your nearest dealer. We hunt and trap with our Zeiss Conquest V4 and V6 rifle scopes and the new line of rings. Carl Zeiss Sport Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. So, did the rubber bodies work? I don't know. An <laughs> unqualified, I don't know. Oh. And here's, here's the deal. Every time I'd go there, they'd be sprung. But nothing in it. And there's no way an otter springs it that often. So, I think actually... I think actually there's pike, there's small pike yes, in that. Yes, there is, we know that. In, in yeah. that river. And I think pike were hitting it. Looking for food. Well, and they're just little pike, yeah. you know, but, but all the same. So, that, you know, the uh, 330 would, would, would not catch them, would, would bridge them in that. But they were, all, they were always sprung, but it was frustrating as heck because there was nothing in it. Yeah. You're going to see here uh, right away, I reset them and I set them like you would for a, a bottom edge. Right. Bottom edge set, but for otter and that, and we start catching otter. Oh. So wow. I think for in that case, the putting the the minnows on was a distraction. Probably. Got to try different stuff though. Hard to tell. I'm gonna have to go look, but it looks like that one might be sprung. Yeah. Nothing at all. I think I'm going to set this back here again though, because this is where they're coming in and out. It's hard when it's so wide open. This is the other one looks like. nothing in it huh looks like this would be a really good spot to, to, to reset that in get it out of here before uh, it freezes in. Stupid part about these rubber gloves is a day like today is they are so cold I can hardly make them bend. There we go. There we go. Little one. So I think I'm gonna set this back up again. 
I'll probably set that one right back on that log again like that. And this one maybe I'm gonna set just where it, it crosses here. Like that. It always seems like these work best when they're set close to an edge like that. So it becomes like a blind set, right? They're going to be swimming along that edge anyway. And kabang. You get them. Man, that ice freaks me out when I, how hollow it is when I walk across. Driving Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo Extreme Terrain Vehicles conquer any season, any terrain. See all the new models at your newest dealer. Argo, go anywhere. Southland Trailer Corporation makes the Royal Cargo Trailer used by Trapping Inc. Southland Trailer, behind you all the way. Midland Radio helps you stay in touch in the wild. Check out the new X-Talkers at your nearest dealer. Communication for every adventure. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. Do you want even more Trapping Inc? Our private community is where you will find all our exclusive videos, articles, and podcasts. One of the misfortunes is that otter fur, in, in the most glorious, wonderful fur that it is, and I'm yes. getting all of ours tanned this year. Yes. Because we're going to do some stuff with it. And But it used to be very, very valuable. Well, the Tibetan monks used them for their ceremonial robes. Yes, and then the Dalai Lama opened his mouth and said that they were endangered, not realizing or not caring, I'm not sure which, that the North American river otter was the only population that, that was growing so hugely and that could uh, sustain a, a harvest. Correct. And it has to be harvested. So it's important that we get that information out because inevitably it comes back to the Dalai Lama said yeah. and, yeah. and he would be right with the respect to the 18 or 19 other species of otter in the world, but not with regard to North American river otter. Exactly. Alrighty. What all we got happening here? I had a set right here. And I think I have an otter in it. Yes. I think I'm going to set it some current here and let it clean up a bit. It's dirty from all the, the settling here. Good idea. That one's still good. This has been a really good spot this year. And I see by the activity over there that the otter have been back. Oh yeah, there's one right there. We got one covering this hole. I wonder if the hole is still viable or not. We'll have to check. But there, you see they've been in here and you can see the toilet they got going. Uh, they were here yesterday, over there anyway, because uh, that just barely froze at all and it barely got down to freezing last night. I'll give that a check after I check this out. These uh, Bain River spots are so productive because the otters are coming through here all the time. There's a lot of places where I catch otter where they're making a, a side trip, go to a special pond or whatever. And so they're in and out. They're not there all the time, but these, uh, you take these, oh yeah, there we go. You take a, a, a river like this, it's a main river between the main lakes. There's otters through here all the time. Let's see if that's open or not. Or do I set another one here? 
Yeah, you know what? I can. There we go. That's all it takes, and I, I can drop another one over top of it. Toggle off onto another 280 here. I like, really like the 280s for these small holes because they don't get the chance to step on the metal or anything. You know, a big trap covers a bigger area. They might step on it, make it rock. It might shut, make them shy off. Whereas a 280, they can walk right up to it and they can shove their face into it, right? And that uh, that works out better. They're not, they're not, they get caught before they realize that there's something there that's different. Uh, otters are not in any way keyed on metal or, or anything like that, right? Well, that's it for another show. Hope you enjoyed it. We actually ended up too short of our quota. Too, too, not too short, but <laughs> too short of our quota. We have a quota of 12 and we got 10. But we could have had, we could have shot the last two. Oh, easy. Uh, we saw them at, uh, just as the ice was leaving the, the, the lake, so it was... The first of May, I believe. Yes. And we we can legally shoot them on our trap line. I mean, we're allowed to trap, hunt, or shoot. Correct. Uh, uh, all, any of the animals that, that are available there during season, and the season was still open for 15 days. But the thing is, is that now the ice was, was leaving, you're getting a lot more sunshine, and that's when otter fur gets singed. Right, okay. and, and so that just means that it's not as valuable a fur, and it's better to leave them and we can catch them next year. Absolutely. We had a great time. Hope you guys had a great time. Second last show of the year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hope we'll to see you down the line.